The chandeliers that light Nash's rooms were made for George IV by the English glassmakers, Parker and Perry. They're cut from the finest leaded glass crystal to give them maximum sparkle. The thing that strikes me, you know, as you walk from room to room in Buckingham Palace, is it's just one fabulous chandelier after another. And presumably, you know, anyone coming here could be in no doubt that someone who had chandeliers like this was not only fabulously wealthy, but also, you know, very important. Yes, I mean, they were absolutely a status symbol, the sort of peak of opulence, really. And I know it's a bit prosaic, but when I look at them, I can't help thinking, a nightmare of cleaning them. <laughs> well, it's true, they do have to be dusted. So um, we have this cunning device. I wondered if right. you wanted to have a go at lowering the chandelier. Um, it's very high tech, you just have to press the button. This isn't um, going to be one of those only fools and horses moments, <laughs> is it? There we go. And when, you can see it when it moves like that, you can get the idea of the shimmering light and how it must have looked with candles burning. Fantastic little squeaky noise. Oh, it's just stopped. And, and will it... Oh, there it is again. <laughs> and will it... It won't just keep going? No, it, it stops just before it gets to the floor. Don't worry, it won't... Uh, Incredible. It won't, yes, it's very carefully, <laughs> carefully organised. I presume if you were sitting underneath it as a guest, I mean, occasionally you'd get a little splat of hot wax on your well, shoulder. Well, I suspect you might have done it. I mean, the, the idea of, obviously, the... the um, the, the candle branches have these little drip pans and they were designed to catch the hot wax. But nevertheless, I suspect that some ladies may have got hot wax on their lovely dresses. Gosh, oh, amazing to see it at our level. I know, really it's close incredible. up with the detail. And it gives you a real idea of the size of it, rather than being right up above you. And just the engineering that's gone into it. So you've got this style here with the two drops and then the longer drop. And then you've got these sort of balloon-shaped glass. And yes. And these with the bigger droplets. Exactly. And then, and then all the little saucers and everything has been cut. And these are like little crowns at the top, are they there? Yes. And I think that these arms are supposed to represent scepters. So um, it was obviously very specifically royal. Make this amazing yes. tinkle as well. Yes. And what came next? Was it gas? Well, a lot of the palace was converted to gas, but in fact the uh, chandeliers, I think, went straight from candles to electricity. The gas light would have given off quite a lot of heat. I mean, her candles did too, actually, and Queen Victoria, quite often in her diary, she writes about some party that she's given, and she said, oh, it's terribly hot, and I think that was because of all the candles burning. I mean, the, the, the manpower involved in maintaining a, a chandelier like this was huge. And we have d descriptions of a, a party that George IV gave, describing the number of staff, and he had 30 people just to keep the candles lit. It's not an understatement, is it, this chandelier? No. It's just excess in every way, but in the most beautiful taste, Absolutely. actually. Absolutely, yes. I mean, it's very easy to laugh at George IV for gilding everything, but I think when you see something like this and you realise that everything would have been flickering in this amazing candlelight, it gives you an idea of what he was trying to achieve in his interiors. It just must have been amazing to see.